Hey everybody, uh, Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich here. Going to do the vlog tonight. We're going to focus more on the Carolinas. Uh, I will talk a little bit about Florida, but you know, prayers to everybody down there in Florida because um, it is just a devastating storm. And the pictures and the, the information coming out of there is just is horrific. This is the 9 p.m. advisory. Winds, thankfully, are all the way back down to 105. That's still a Category 2 storm. Um, but it is slowly losing strength as it moves across Florida. It's still a powerful storm though. Flash flooding is a big concern right now and the winds are still causing all kinds of issues. Flash flood emergencies for parts of Florida and uh, the water has just been unrelenting. Um, so what happens next? Well, th this is gonna move across Florida. It is gonna reemerge in the Southeastern part of um, the Georgia coastline, maybe off the South Carolina coast over warm water. Um, but it won't be getting stronger. What that is going to do as it moves off in that direction, it's going to keep it from getting strong, uh, from getting weaker, but it's not going to get stronger. So basically, even though it's going to be over water, it's going to spread out the wind field and actually cause the winds to be over a bigger area. That means more water could get pushed, and we're also going to see um, more areas see wind inland. So for that reason, there are storm surge. Um, warnings and watches for the North and South Carolina coast. There will be some water three to five uh, feet in the low country of South Carolina down into parts of Georgia, one to three north of there. So um, let me show you the expanse of the new uh, watches and advisories, which continue to expand. So um, I'm going to pause it right here and play this real quick and just kind of show you. We've got some coastal uh, tropical storm warnings and tropical storm watches now extended up into parts of North Carolina and then inland watches all the way up into the Charlotte area. And why is that? Well, we're probably going to see stronger winds pretty far inland into South Carolina. Here's the up updated track. Um, you see it moving across Florida, kind of moves over the water. And again, just because it's over the water doesn't mean it gets stronger. Notice it just maintains strength. So it'll be a, a tropical storm as it makes another landfall in South Carolina, moves up towards Columbia, could be close to a tropical depression, tropical storm. So uh, for that reason, that's why you're seeing the tropical storm watches. And then it becomes a extra tropical system over Western North Carolina. That's why you're seeing some of those um, watches being issued. So what's the timing of all this? Well, let's look at the, I think the best thing to look at is the future cast here kind of showing as the winds are going to be blowing tomorrow. We're going to see strong winds across the area. Now along the coast tomorrow, um, we should be okay. Storm surge will start coming up. But Friday morning, this is 2 o'clock in the morning right here, uh, we'll start to see bands of heavy rain. If we're going to see tornadoes, they would happen down in that area. And notice as we go through time, that heavy rain starts to spread inland. So we wake up to rain in Charlotte. It extends back to the west. And probably the worst weather is going to be Friday during the day into Friday night. Now I think this is a little too quick. But I do think what could happen late Friday into Saturday um, is that we see dry air try to wrap around. So maybe um, the good news here is, and I'm seeing more trends of this in the guidance, the dry slot punches in here and kind of shuts off some of the uh, rainfall. Now, let's keep our fingers crossed that happens. That will reduce the overall flood threat. Um, but that's something we're going to have to keep an eye on. That's, a tr that's actually a good trend. Now, that fo forward movement moving quicker like that also means we're probably gonna see winds make it pretty far inland into North and South Carolina. And for that reason, that's why you're seeing tropical storm um, advisories issued. So there's a quick look at the winds. I'll show you as they move inland. You can see tomorrow even, we've got winds gusting to 25, 30 miles per hour. We go into Friday morning, look at some of these winds. So if we start losing some of the rainfall, we might make up for it with some pretty strong winds. I mean, these are pretty high. I mean, you're seeing 50, 60 mile wind gusts for eastern parts of our viewing area. Now, will that verify? I don't think they will, but 40, 45 is not out of the realm of possibility. So our number one concern is going to be rain, but wind is starting to increase. That threat is honestly going up a little bit. I'll show you the excessive rainfall outlook. Still got the extreme risk for Florida today, tomorrow. Friday, the risk starts expanding into the Carolinas, and you see us under that low risk. Right now, this is the, the kind of the rainfall forecast, the heavy swath of rain through Florida. And then you see four to six with two to five um, for parts of the Charlotte area. So again, our main threats are going to be rain and wind, though I will tell you the wind threat is starting to get a little bit heightened here. Um, we're in a medium risk for rain, but I'm starting to creep up the medium risk for winds as well. Because if you look over on the right here, you can see the medium risk winds 20 to 30 miles per hour, but gusting to 40 to 45. That's a pretty good possibility, especially in these areas here south and east. And the good news in all this, uh, because of that 
cold air, the kind of cold air damming trapped, I don't think we're going to see a ton of severe weather inland. On the coast, yeah, there is a low end risk for an isolated tornado threat out in that area. So that's kind of the latest thinking right now. I'm hoping this thing moves in and out fairly quickly. I wanted to show you one more thing because uh, the probability of seeing uh, tropical storm force winds um, is something that give you a really good idea on, on the penetration of the, of the winds. You could see moving up through the Charleston area, that's a 60 to 70% chance of tropical storm force winds. Um, and as you move inland, it drops off, but notice how high it is even in Columbia. Um, so the, this forward speed, two things that we're seeing the wind threat increase. One, it was a much stronger hurricane at landfall, 150 miles per hour, so it just takes longer for it to wind down, plus the interaction with the front and a little bit forward speed that picks up means it's able to take winds farther inland. So the wind threat is something to keep an eye on. Um, if you have loose items outside, patio furniture, trash cans, whatever, you're gonna wanna secure them tonight or first thing tomorrow, because I do think that will be an issue uh, going into Thursday into Friday. Now, if you want some good news, I do think late Saturday, Sunday is looking better right now, but um, that's still a long ways out. So. Um, We'll keep an eye on that, but I think early on we're, we're looking pretty good uh, for the later part of the weekend. So I'll post another update coming up tomorrow. The vlogs will be two times a day uh, through the weekend. I'll keep you up to date on what's going on, but get prepared now. Um, this isn't anything like what's happening in Florida, but it's certainly something to take serious.